Wednesday, March 16th, 1024 a.m. I'm going to read chapter 4 of part 3 of book 4, the formula of Alhim and not of Alim. Alhim, or Elohim, is the exoteric word for gods. Gods are the forces of nature. Their names are the laws of nature. Thus they are eternal, omnipotent, omnipresent, and so on. And thus their wills are immutable and absolute. It is the masculine plural of a feminine noun, but its nature is principally feminine. It represents sakti, or te. Femininity always means form, manifestation. The masculine siva, or tau, is always a concealed force. It is a perfect hieroglyph of the number five. This should be studied in a note on Genesis. The elements are all represented, as in tetragrammaton, but there is no development from one into the others. They are, as it were, thrown together, untamed, only sympathizing by virtue of their wild and stormy but elastically resistless energy. The central letter is He, the letter of breath, and represents spirit. The central letter is He, the letter of breath, and represents spirit. The first letter, Aleph, is the natural letter of air, and the final Mem is the natural letter of water. Together, Aleph and Mem make Am, the mother within whose womb the cosmos is conceived. But Yod is not the natural letter of fire. Its juxtaposition with He sanctifies that fire to the Yod of Tetragrammaton. Similarly, we find Lamed for earth, where we should expect Tau, in order to emphasize the influence of Venus who rules Libra. Alhim, therefore, represents rather the formula of consecration than that of a complete ceremony. It is the breath of benediction, yet so potent that it can give life to clay and light to darkness. In consecrating a weapon, Aleph is the whirling force of the thunderbolt, the lightning which flameth out of the east even into the west. The lightning which flameth out of the east even into the west. This is the gift of the wielding of the thunderbolt of Zeus, or Indra, the god of air. Lamed is the ox goad, the driving force. It is also the balance, representing the truth and love of the magician. It is the loving care which he bestows upon perfecting his instruments, and the equilibration of that fierce force which initiates the ceremony. The letters Aleph and Lamed are infinitely important in this eon of Horus. They are indeed the key of the Book of the Law. No more can be said in this place than that Aleph is Harpocrates, Bacchus Diffuse, the Holy Ghost, the pure fool or innocent babe who is also the wandering singer, who impregnates the king's daughter with himself as her child. Lamed is the king's daughter, satisfied by him, holding his sword of balances in her lap. These weapons are the judge, armed with power to execute his will, and the two witnesses in whom shall every truth be established, in accordance with whose testimony he gives judgment. Yod is the creative energy, the procreative power, and yet Yod is the solitude and silence of the hermitage, into which the magician has shut himself. Mem is the letter of water, and it is the Mem final whose long flat lines suggest the sea at peace, not the ordinary initial and medial Mem whose hieroglyph is a wave. In the symbolism above outlined, Yod is the mercurial virgin word, the spermatozoon concealing its light under a cloak, and Mem is the amniotic fluid the flood wherein is the life-bearing ark. See the ship by Aleister Crowley. And then, in the center of all, broods spirit, which combines the mildness of the lamb with the horns of the ram, and is the letter of Bacchus or Christ. The letter He is the formula of Nuit, which makes possible the process described in the previous notes. But it is not possible here to explain fully the exact matter or manner of this adjustment. I have preferred the exoteric attributions, which are sufficiently informative for the beginner. After the magician has created his instrument, and balanced it truly, and filled it with the lightnings of his will, then is the weapon laid away to rest, and in this silence a true consecration comes. The Formula of Alim It is extremely interesting to contrast with the above the formula of the elemental gods deprived of the creative spirit. One might suppose that, as Alim is the masculine plural of the masculine noun Al, its formula would be more virile than that of Alhim, which is the masculine plural of the feminine noun Allah. A moment's investigation is sufficient to dissipate the illusion. The masculine has no meaning except in relation to some feminine correlative. The word Alim may in fact be considered as neuter. By a rather absurd convention, neuter objects are treated as feminine on account of their superficial resemblance in passivity and inertness with the unfertilized female. But the female produces life by the intervention of the male, while the neuter does so only when impregnated by spirit. Thus we find the feminine Amma becoming Aima through the operation of the phallic Yod, while Alim, the congress of dead elements, only fructifies by the brooding of spirit. 
Ama is 42, the number of sterility. Ima, 52, that of fertility. Of Ben, the sun. This being so, how can we describe Alim as containing a magical formula? This being so, how can we describe Alim as containing a formula? Inquiry discloses the fact that this formula is of a special kind. The word adds up to 81, which is a number of the moon. It is thus the formula of witchcraft, which is under Hecate. See Orpheus for a superb invocation of this goddess. It is only the romantic medieval perversion of science that represents young women as partaking in witchcraft, which is, properly speaking, which is, properly speaking, restricted to the use of such women as are no longer women in the magical sense of the word, because they are no longer capable of corresponding to the formula of the male, and are therefore neuter rather than feminine. It is for this reason that their method has always been referred to the moon, in that sense of the term in which she appears, not as the feminine correlative of the sun, but as the burnt-out, dead, airless satellite of Earth. No true magical operation can be performed without the formula of Alim. All the works of witchcraft are illusory, and their apparent effects depend on the false idea that it is possible to alter things by the mere rearrangement of them. One must not rely upon the false analogy of the xylenes to rebut this argument. It is quite true that geometrical isomers act in different manners toward the substances to which they are brought into relation, and it is of course necessary sometimes to rearrange the elements of a molecule before that molecule can form either the masculine or the feminine element in a true magical combination with some other molecule. It is therefore occasionally inevitable for a magician to reorganize the structure of certain elements before proceeding to his operation proper. Although such work is technically witchcraft, it must not be regarded as undeniable on that ground, for all operations which do not transmute matter fall strictly speaking under this heading. The real objection to this formula is not inherent in its own nature. Witchcraft conceals in treating it as the exclusive preoccupation of magic, and especially in denying to the Holy Spirit his right to indwell his temple. The initiate of the 11th degree of OTO will remark that there is a totally different formula of Alim, complementary with that here discussed. 81 may be regarded as a number of Yasad rather than of Luna. The actual meaning of the word may be taken as indicating the formula. Aleph may be referred to Harpocrates, with allusion to the well-known poem of Cautilus. Lamed may imply the exaltation of Saturn, and suggest the Three of Swords in a particular manner. Yod will then recall Hermes, and Mem the Hanged Man. We have thus a tetragrammaton which contains no feminine component. The initial force is here the Holy Spirit, and its vehicle or weapon, the sword and balances. Justice is then done upon the mercurial virgin, with the result that the man is hanged or extended, and is slain in this manner. Such an operation makes creation impossible, as in the former case. But here there is no question of rearrangement. The creative force is employed deliberately for destruction, and is entirely absorbed in its own sphere, or cylinder on Einstein's equations, of action. This work is to be regarded as holiness to the Lord, the Hebrews, in fact, conferred the title of Kadash, holy, upon its adepts. Its effect is to consecrate the magicians who perform it in a very special way. We may take note also of the correspondence of nine with Teth, eleven, Leo, and the serpent. The great merits of this formula are that it avoids contact with the inferior planes, that it is self-sufficient, that it involves no responsibilities, and that it leaves its masters not only stronger in themselves, but wholly free to fulfill their essential natures. Its abuse is an abomination.